Hello fellow map makers, welcome to tonight's live map making session. Hope the sound is okay. Yeah, microphone seems good from what I can see. Let me know if the sound is off in any way. Otherwise, we're gonna start out with our map making tonight. Hope you're all okay, doing good, uh, wrapped up nice and warm if necessary. Because it's still winter, pretty cold here, at least at night in Germany, and we've got some fitting map stuff, some snow covered city escapes to map tonight. Good. Sound seems to be good. So let's uh, get rolling. Tonight I want to look at, as is usual for the beginning of the month, the current annual that's just been released on Tuesday. It was Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Um, the latest work by our all beloved Sue. Uh, another wonderful city style, this time with snow and ice and for the depths of winter. And uh, we're gonna make a, a small map using uh, the style and I'll show you how to use all the assets and go through uh, the process of creating a map. As usual, if you have any questions regarding the session, post them in the map and uh, in the map, sorry, in the chat and uh, I'll see uh, what I can answer. So we'll collect stuff and forward it to me. Sometimes I even spot questions myself in the chat. However, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. All right, so let's go to our map interface. Got a little the one of the example maps from the annual on screen. Actually, the one I created while doing the uh, mapping guide, and we'll do something similar, perhaps a bit smaller because of the time limit. But I think I'm sure we'll get something nice together, even if just we just have that one hour. So to start, we go up to our new map button, click that, don't save the current one. Um, the map type we are looking for is under cities. And there we do have the winter village style here, the two templates, metric and standard one. As you can see, we've switched uh, to using the name of the style as in the start, stopped putting annual in front because it didn't help anymore anyway. So uh, you can find the style under its name directly in the alph alphabetical order. So I'm going to click next and here I can set the uh, size of the map. This one, this new style is freely configurable so you can um, put in any height to width ratio but to stay close to our screen uh, dimensions. Um, I'm uh, gonna stick with the 5 to 4 aspect ratio we usually do but I'm gonna go a little bit smaller to the 500 by 400 feet because I want to keep uh, the area fairly restricted and I'm thinking of doing a little perhaps a mill on a pond with uh, a few huts and houses around. That might be something nice to create tonight. So I'm going to click finish here and go to more video folder. Call the map the watermill and here we are. So I'm uh, thinking about uh, a mill, what, uh, water mill, what does that need? Some water, of course, and uh, usually uh, for a water mill you'd have a, it alongside a stream or river and especially if it's a stream you'd have some uh, dammed area to create a mill pond which then uh, has a side canal to uh, have a controllable water flow for the mill wheel. And so on. we're going to start out by creating a stream uh, for our map. For that, we're going to go to the drawing tools, click that, and we can display samples, scroll down, and we have some nice uh, water tools here. And we're going to grab the 
dark water and I'm going to use that to draw our stream. So I think I'm going to go from top right to the lower left. Just I start out, I'm uh, thinking I will need a mill pond, something to that effect, but um, because that's artificial, I'm going to start with just the general flow of the stream itself. And uh, that's our outline here, and I've got the sheet effects on, and you can already see that we have some nice effects on the um, uh, creating a soft bevel for a snowy bank and uh, some color graduation, and you see the beautiful frozen uh, water texture that's so created for our style here. And then I'm, now I'm thinking I'll need our mill pond and uh, for that I'm just going to use the same tool again and just draw the, the pond across our stream here. There we go. We do have a little bit of a texture uh, met, uh, mismatch here, of course, where the two polygons overlap, but uh, since I'm going to put some stuff on top of that anyway, probably um, I'll leave that as is for now. If uh, you don't want that, you can always um, go back and draw the both pond and stream together as one entity, then you wouldn't have the, uh, the um, border between the two entities there visible on the bitmap fill. So, um, so this would be our mill pond, dammed here probably, so we could uh, take a look whether we already have something that we could put up there as a, um, a, a dam, a structure or something. We have, for example, we have our field walls here, if I think they are, and uh, probably just put something here across and see if this is a connecting symbol. Nice and I'm going to put this up as a at least temporary dam. So I know where my dam goes. I can always work on that later. So um, then next I want a, a little side canal but that's used to control the water flow by on which the uh, Mill wheel sits. I'm going to put the mill up here on the upper side of the pond and uh, stream area. And let's start by adding that little canal um, using the same tool again. This is going to be fairly straight because it's man made. Perhaps turn down here and runs into the stream again at this point. There's our canal. And for th with that we do have the general layout of our land. I can add uh, perhaps uh, a hilly area, perhaps some um, there's, this is a bit in the stream valley, we have some hillsides going up on the sides, so let's add that for our general layout. Again, I'm going to go for the uh, drawing tools and we do have a snowy hill terrain here and we're got, just going to add some hill area here on the top side. Going to ex extend that quite a bit beyond the map border we do want most of the just the basically yeah yeah we're just seeing a little bit you can see it better uh, better on this and here because it's a uh, fairly small scale we just barely see that the land is rising a little bit to the side and this is fine I think we'll do something similar on the oops that was the wrong tool on the other side here little bit less extension beyond the border so we can see this here 
Oh, that looks pretty nice. All right, so next up, let's uh, look for mill building and create uh, an, the main layout of our building area. And for that, we're going to take a look at the house, build, um, house symbols. We do have um, quite a lot of house symbols here in the catalog. If I right click on the catalog area, that opens up the whole screen so I can see more of them. Still not all, because many of them are hidden in these groups, symbol groups. And you can see we do have quite a few symbols here, both in the thatched version, which basically has snow covering the whole roof, and the tiled version, which does have leave some uh, tiled areas. Uh, free of snow, basically assuming the tiled roofs are a bit steeper and uh, snow doesn't grip as well on them, and you'll have easier snow sliding off and might also be less insulated than the thatched roofs, so a little bit more melting snow and just gives a nice differentiation between the two types of roofs. All the symbols for the style are in that one catalog, so you don't need to switch between different catalogs up on the uh, symbol catalog toolbar. You've got everything available here in the one catalog. So let's have a look for a nice uh, house that might represent a mill. Should be fairly large, I guess. And this looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab that. You can see that it already attaches to the, the stream area. And I'm going to use that extension there as the area of the mill wheel. This is basically, well, let's zoom in a bit so I can show that better. You can see this is the normal orientation of the symbol. If I hover over a polygon edge or a line, then it would align to that area, depending on which side of that line my mouse cursor is, it will switch around. If I wanted that extension on the other side, I could go in and say I want to mirror the symbol. And that's how I want it to be, because I want to be have the mill wheel area farther away from the pond. Oh, okay, that didn't work like that. That's not what I wanted. Uh, I guess the uh, clicking that brings that back. Yes, that doesn't work like that. So what we're going to do instead, we're go going to simply put the, um, to undo the mirroring here and use the mill wheel on this side of the building. There we go. And this way we can imagine that the mill wheel is below this roof part here. I don't have a symbol specifically for mill wheel that I could um, see from the top, but since you want to protect the, the wheel from the weather, probably from the ice and, uh, and snow a little bit, it would not be uncommon to have an actual little bit of roof above it. So that works just fine. And this is the main house here for our little settlement. So next up we do need to put, add a little bit of road and paths and then from then there on we'll add more buildings to uh, the map. So I'm going to go in and have a look here at our uh, tools. So we've got some muddy or packed snow roads. So let's use the main road and show it because it's pretty well traveled as some uh, bit of frozen mud. So I'm going to take this fill style and just say the road runs here alongside the mill building. Again, and if I zoom in, you'll see that Zeus created this very nice uh, distortion effect uh, showing irregular snow drifts and stuff. So it's pretty good. But what I want, I want a bit of an extension here that 
shows the path leading up to the house. And I do want to, just for aesthetic purposes, move that section of the behind the screen covering the edge of the map. So I just won't see that there. So that's pretty, uh, pretty nice. So what else do we need? We uh, do need a, a few little bridges, stuff across the uh, the canal and the the stream. So let's have a look. We have some bridge symbols here. That might perhaps be a bit wide for uh, because it's more going to be a little wooden rickety thing and not a big stone bridge. But I'm gonna try it anyway. We can always make it smaller. Yeah, you can see that's this is pretty large. So let's make that a little bit smaller. And just let's put a little stretch here across the canal. Probably uh, should I pro probably put it on the other side. That's better. And then I'm uh, gonna put some uh, bit of a wall. I could use this the city wall actually in the scaled down version here on the on the dam for a little bit of also a way to cross the stream at this point. Oh, that's actually a little bit too short. Let's try that again. Ah, that's, um, yeah, problem with scaling and the connecting symbols. Because I'm uh, scaled it down, it doesn't work like it intended anymore, but I can simply move that. Because I do need to move these anyway to put them below our dam. This is actually above the dam. Let's have a look which um, symbols, uh, which sheet they're on. They're on symbols wall and our dam is on the symbols field boundary. So what we are going to do, we're going to take a quick look here. Field boundary is pretty much at the lowest point since we no, don't need the symbols wall shield for real city walls anyway, I can just move it up and there it's below that. And what we're also going to do is we are going to turn off the wall shadows because we don't want a big shadow on that. It looks good for our little dam. So let's just connect these with uh, some more roads or paths actually for that we're going to uh, use the much smaller version this one down here and then we're gonna add a little path going off into the distance and another one going this direction. So we do have a nice path layout here. And now it's time to add some more buildings to our map. First off, let's uh, add another little bit larger building. So I'm going to set the scaling back to the normal size. I'm going to put it on the other side of the road here. Just to show some main, the main settlement, settlement, and also I'm going to connect the houses, the entrances to the main road because people will still be using this even in the heavy snow. So that's our tiled roof buildings. Tiled roofs tend to be, uh, in my imagination, the more. Uh, posh ones. So these will be the, the Miller and perhaps his immediate family. And then we'll have some 
uh, servants uh, and uh, hands working for the mill and perhaps uh, some a little bit of farms around that and for that we're going to add some simpler buildings and assume these as having the th thatched roofs. Um, I can close the group here again to have some random selection of buildings but these are actually already getting too large for my taste they're thinking they uh, in comparison to the main buildings they are getting a bit too large so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to look at drawing some buildings with the house command. I'm going to click the house symbol, house command, and there we do have the different styles. CA183 is the number of our annual, so we do have uh, the default one is actually the same as the thatch one. Then we do have the tiled one and the ones that have the M behind the number are the metric versions because the scaling needs to be different in these so they have their own settings. Since I'm not work working on a metric map I'm going to stick with the, these ones. I'm going to take the thatched snow tile. I can choose different building layouts and roof shapes up here. And, but I'm going to stay with the simple stuff and then I'm just going to add a few smaller buildings here along the road. Same here. And I can also of course go in here and add a tiled house, perhaps a smaller side building here, still has a tiled roof. You can see it matches the symbols, the symbol buildings pretty well. Another thing what we do need is um, chimneys and stuff. So we uh, do have dormers and chimneys here which I can just grab and put on the map, the building, dormer. And we can see they all blend very nicely into the structures built through the house symbols through the house command. We go. Some chimneys and also perhaps one or two dormers and complete snow coverage for these buildings. There we are. Again, I do want to mark the entrances to the houses by having a little cleared path for that I'll just very simply connect the houses with the main road. That looks pretty good. And then we perhaps do have a watchtower or something like that here on the road. The mill is always an uh, important building, so not surprising if we do have some watchtower here close by. Oh, this is a bit too small. We do have a larger town. We have got the stone keep here. And here we do have some keep stuff and I'm going to just use one of these as it tower. As you can see it goes on the symbols tower sheet immediately giving it a higher um, a longer shadow indicating a greater height. And again I'm gonna grab the this time the larger road. And have some paths leading up to the tower. It looks nice. So uh, we do have some room here on the other side and a few paths. So we could add a few huts on the other side of the mill pond. 
for that I'm gonna go with the house tool again and with the default thatched roof style I can choose a different house shape this time so I'm gonna add something here might be a barn or a stable or something along that idea and again simpler shape perhaps with a different roof layout so here on the side of the pond and again I do want some connections to the path also some uh, chimneys here and I don't think I did need a dormer on these buildings so that looks pretty nice for our general layout of buildings and um, now we've got to think about some additional stuff. We'll probably have some fields around the area. And I do want a little bit of a wooded area um, on my map. So I'm going to start with adding some field spaces. For that we do have nice drawing tools here. Also all created by Sue. Pretty varying snow covering. I'm going to grab some very strongly snow covered ones and just add these along the edge here Let's zoom in here on the area so I'm assuming I've got fields extending here beyond the edge of the little village I like to use different textures to denote different um, fields or make them visually a little give a little bit of interest more than you'd probably see in the landscape like that um, so but it's always nice to have some visual differentiation on the map this time i've aligned the furrows in the other direction again they would probably normally not be in that because that's more work if you have the uh, furrows uh, go on the uh, short edges because um, you have to turn so much, you would normally have the furrows go along the long side of the field. And another field texture here. And let's just do this a little bit more irregularly. Might be a pasture. And now I want to separate these with a little bit of the stone walls. I've got the field walls here, which are perfect for that. And I'm just going to grab these, and these are the nice connecting symbols. Remember to leave some openings so people can actually get onto your fields. There we are, might even separate these two. And here I'm gonna add a hedge instead. That's pretty large. Can put this up to the wall here. And here we just have a hedge going along the edge of the pasture. All right, so uh, there's, we've got some fields here on that side of the village. I'm uh, going to add a few more here, some field areas, perhaps the communal village green. And up here. And so 
the darker spots. Yeah, the area between the milk canal and the stream. Just for some variation in the ground texture. And then I can go in and add some trees to the map. So next up, I'm um, actually this time actually going to remember and switch to the vegetation layer. Now then, I'm going to first grab some bare deciduous trees. All oh, these might are uh, standing in the village. I'm just going to pop them down here. Turn on the sheet effects to see. Probably not have that many trees in a medieval village that close to the center, but I uh, always like to include some. And then uh, we might have the beginning of a wood here on the uh, south eastern edge of the map. And for that, we're going to grab the first symbols. Again, these are all randomized, so each click gives you a new one to put down on the map. And that lets us easily create a wooded area here. here. Sparse or dense as you prefer. We could also build a Little tool for that, spread uh, them across nearer randomly with the fill area with symbols command, but it's small enough that I don't bother about that and like the control I have by just placing individual trees down. So. <laughs> yes, uh, cabbages, yeah, yeah, uh, make them small and you have winter cabbages on the fields, uh, yeah, <laughs> that would work. And there we are. Could even use some of the uh, field textures without the furrows to um, do a little bit of texture variation in the forested areas. I'll just the little spots down. The sheet effects will make sure that they are not too strong here. There you are. And there's our nice little wooded area on the southern edge of the map. <laughs> Good. So we do have a few little other tools that I want uh, to use. See, uh, the mill pond has probably been frozen over for quite a while and um, probably therefore more snow collected. So I've got the um, surface frost here tool for the water, which I can just put on top of the water here to give it a... Actually I'm going to use that to uh, draw across the texture border here that I noticed to hide that. And there we've got a nice brighter or uh, whiter area in the center of the of the uh, lake. We could make it larger to cover more Perhaps, but uh, perhaps a little bit more realistic. But I quite like the that I can see the edge of the pond very clearly this way. If I made it larger, then it would blend even more into the snow around it. So I'm going to leave it at this. And we also do have um, textures for some deeper, lumpier snow here, which is nice to cover some of the open areas with. Look here, let's see, 
because of the small size of my area it's the effect is nice and subtle let's have a look here how that looks when we draw it underneath the trees yeah gives some nice variation on the very smooth snow surface so i'm going to also do that here on that side oops uh, i did misclick Across this area, let's have see how the uh, whether that hides the field texture. No, the field texture is still on top. That's not good. See, you don't really see that much if you uh, see just a subtle variation of the snow surface, and that's just how I like it here. Again, can do a bit of that up here. And if we do such a small piece here, we'll probably hardly notice at all. Yeah. Pretty good. Happy with that. Let's have a look whether I'm missing anything uh, else I might want to add, except for compass rolls and scale bar. We'll do that later. We've used the walls, we've used the bridge, and we've used some of the bigger buildings, we used the chimneys. We also have the awning here, which is uh, also can just oops. add that as, as a little example on the side here. Though I think it doesn't look so good on this small building, so I'm just going to leave that out. But you can see you can attach these things like the dormers to simply um, you hover your mouse over the edge of the building and then the symbol will align you just choose your position and then you can choose the distance to the roof edge and then you've got your dormer there but again i feel that's a bit too much for that small building so i'm just gonna undo and erase that any drawing tools we still want to add? Yeah, we, we've got the bridge shadow. That's uh, for it's basically a shadow there that you can draw for structures like bridges that cast shadows, which are not very well represented by the default wall shadows. But we don't have anything like this on this map, so I don't need that. We've got some larger muddy areas. So, for example, if you'd want a space here. In the village that is larger like the roads you can use that to add a trampled larger trampled area um if you want to do a little island somewhere we have the bolt of water co cut out tool it's always of course handy say you want to have an island here in the stream and you just put your pink cutout on refresh and then you can see that will have the background show through making a snowy island area Do the same here smaller patches all right good And that covers most of the stuff we have in the tool. We've got the water tool, service frost. Yeah, I uh, used all of that. Very nice. Yes, uh, and if you want to use other stuff, have open water and, and things, you can always use textures from other annuals and from other styles. And Sue's older uh, Darkland style from last year works very well with this, because it's both her style, her, uh, her work. And you could use that to com combine the icy water, the frozen over stuff with the water style. So, next up we uh, 
can add some labels to our map. Let's start out by uh, giving uh, adding a title to the map. We can use either use the map title symbol or the text symbol that comes with the with the template, or we can just use our. Or let's let's just do that. See how large it is and how it looks. And so the how do we call our mill? Well, let's call it the Spencer mill. Okay, and because I didn't uh, set my symbol back back to normal, I'm gonna do this again. Right click, and my I've got still got a rotation for my previous work here, so I'm just gonna go set normal. So I have the rotation set back to zero. Place the symbol again, and type in the text again. There we go, and then I'm gonna move it prior to place where I want it to be, up on the left, upper left, it's a bit, it looks, it's a good location generally, but there's a little bit too much stuff going on, so I'm going to decide to put it on the lower left instead, because it's not that important area in the map there. So it's the Spencer Mill. Okay, I've um, got a question from first and to show how to uh, add a different style here. So, okay, uh, if you wanted the textures from a different style in the map, uh, there might actually be uh, the, um, the old Darklands styles are actually already in included in this because we're expecting people to use the style in there, but to show you how to do that with a different style or um, you what you normally do is just do a draw, insert file, then you choose an example map from the style you want. Um, let's have a look. D program data C3 plus annual. Say you wanted to add the Darkland City styles to the map. You've got the Sample maps here, and then I just select that and have it open uh, on the the map cursor that I can see that I'm exporting it. But I'm not actually placing the map because I would undo anyway, and uh, because I don't want the actual entities in there, I just want the bitmap fills in there. And what it does, even at this point, it already it had has added the bitmap fills to the map. And then I can go in and change existing uh, stuff. For example, I can say change fill style. Say I want to change my frozen area here to um, open water. Let's have a look. We do have let's move stone. Don't we? No, we don't have the we don't have a water style in there. That's a bit unusual. Did I not add the ones there? We do have the this style here, and there you go. And you have this open water area on the map. So that doesn't match so nicely, actually. I'm just thinking that I might misremembering. Do I need to? actually place the map. Let's have a look. Let's zoom out and place it off to the side here. And then just undo, edit, undo. And do I have... No, it's just that that map actually doesn't have any water textures in, the, in there. Surprises me a bit. Only that CA173 water style, but then that's probably the one that was used in that map. So uh, I was doing it correctly already. So 
So for example, if you now wanted to change the, or create a frozen, an open water tool, let's go in, uh, terrain, default water, dark smooth, that's the dark ice, uh, let's call it water default, open water, go into properties, select our fill style for the new tool and then I'd have that available and could draw that if I wanted to show some um, open water above the frozen one so just the just the edges of the water would, would be frozen I'd add a new sheet water open set that is at the current one for the moment and then just use that to draw some open water areas on our map. And then let's have a look. The uh, surface frost is, uh, I could just copy these over, over and make the edge fade inner much smaller. So just five feet. Okay, and there we do have, well, it looks better, some areas where the water's open. What we don't have here is, uh, we might have a more clear-cut edge, where the fr uh, frozen ice is just breaking at the edges, but that would require a little bit more work with uh, sheet effects, with edge one, perhaps another displace effect, something so would so surely come up some uh, up with something nice nice but which is probably a bit too much here for me on, on the live mapping session uh, to create I would have to experiment quite a bit with different sheet effects and to make it an actual a icy edge with broken eyes and stuff yes i've got a follow-up question versus if you add uh a map to an existing one it will all, all all add all the fill styles that are in that map, actually uh, defined in that map not used but defined um, so um, if I let's have a quick look let's uh, take a look I was uh, look at the map I was using to import um, the program data C3 plus annual that's Darkland City. I was using the old market district here. And we do have the, the river here. Let's take a quick look. Use the extract properties on the water. And it does actually really use the... It might just be a mislabeling of the fill style name that it's the 173 instead of the 177. That's all the others have. That's probably just the what uh, threw me off. What it also has has the water ripples bitmap, that, but that was also in the other ones. And in that style, Sue used the combination of the water ripples with this water texture to. Uh, uh, create the water effects in the city style. Ah, and uh, Sue explains it, uh, just explains it to me. She did reuse the water texture from the Darklands Overland style in for the city style, and that's why it does have the other number, the 173. That's the Darklands Over style. So we, it's just so we don't have to double up the um, the bitmap textures, basically because they take up space, and if we can reuse textures from a different. Um, and you'll, in the same year, then we can, uh, occasionally do that, as we, you can see here. And this way we've introduced all the bitmap fills from this map into the other one. It doesn't have to have an entity in there that actually uses the um, bitmap fill. It just has to be defined in the map. Well, let's go back to our mill. And then we can add a little few more labels to the map. Let's go in and set the sheet to text. Oh, that would 
not be strictly necessary. White color, because of the default text uses a dark outline. Don't text doesn't use bitmap uh, fill styles, so this would not have been necessary to, to do, but I was just changing the current properties anyway. So and let's put in just some labels here. Scale it up a bit again with the key uh, the, the um, key alignment top for top, L for left. I can change the alignment of the text as I'm placing it. That's my mill. I've actually switched to a different font here, but I think it's okay to set that off from the title of the map. Oops, what I'm doing here. Mistyping Spencer's house. To the right. See um, the label is a little bit too long for my taste. I want to make it into a two-line label. For that I go in and just use the numeric edit tool. Click on the baseline of the text and then I can edit it. Multi-line and have it bunched up more closely. And then we do have the watchtower. For T for top of line and C for center for the horizontal. There we go. So this is uh, perhaps the carpenter's home. M for middle alignment for the vertical alignment. So pressing M and C will exactly center your text to the place where you click on the map. And just some additional labels here. Let's call it Wolfhorn Forest. What's all just the edge of the forest, obviously. And there we are. Now just add a scale bar. Let's use the 100 feet because our map is fairly small. So I'm going to put that up here on the top right. And a compass rose. A bit too large for my taste, so I'm going to scale it numerically to 3 fourths of its normal size. Put it in the center of the forest or not uh, amidst the trees. And with that, our map is pretty much finished. Nice little cozy area of a water mill. And now we can go in and export that uh, as a background for virtual tabletop, print it, or whatever you want to do with it. You can also say we wanted to add some hex grids for that. Now to this, we can go in and choose a dark blue and do a draw hex or square overlay. Let's do a horizontal hex grid with 10 feet to the, or well, let's make it 20 feet to the hex. No labels, apply. Let's have a look. It's a bit too strong for our taste, so what we're going to do is have a look at the 
grid here and increase the transparency. Let's just make it 25% opacity. And we, if we want the grid to be below the buildings, we can move, even move it up. And that way the grid is only on the ground. And you could even use it and print it for some kind of war game or from a skirmish level with individual pieces or something like that. And that's, let's call our map complete. I'm going to save it. Oh, I'll go one turn off the, the grid for now. Uh, what, uh, what I was trying to avoid when uh, placing the map, if you actually place the map or importing the Darklands city map previously, it will add all the different uh, sheets from that map, which are not in this one already, and see all the different terrain sheets and stuff. And that's what I wanted to avoid. If you don't actually place the map, it will not do that and only import the bitmap fields. But we can always go in, grab all the ones that were added down here, which we don't need, all the ones below the frame, uh, and delete them. And we're not going to see any difference on the map because they are all just empty sheets. What I was, what I wanted to do is I wanted to hide the grid. And I'm gonna name it CA 183 for the uh, annual number and then our actual title, Spencer's Mill. And that way I can use it in the future for example maps, put it on uh, the website for download. All right, and uh, there we are, and we are just within the hour. It's almost seven, so perfect timing to complete the map, and we'll call it finished uh, for now. Hope you liked our little water mill in the deep of winter with the frozen mill pond. Yes, another masterpiece for the Sue Daniel Gallery of Fine Art. We should actually put that up on the website. Would be well deserved. And um, I hope you have a good evening and a good weekend after tomorrow. And I'll see you again safe and healthy next week. All the best. Happy mapping. Bye-bye.